the grid. And as I always like to say, who's got the hooch? Tonight, we are gathered here today to watch some weird wrestling documentaries from about 20 years ago. It's going to be something. It's going to be a scene. It's time to relax and go off the grid. Wordplay. Welcome, everyone. I uh, got a got a fun chat tonight. We got Cajun Jungle Tigre, Printex Maximus, Reliable Arbiter. Again, always want to call you the Reliable Bart Biter. Um, got uh, Don't Eat the Squid. I will not eat the squid. Squid's gross. I am not a fan of the calamari. Um, I see Fire Pro Sabuki in the chat. I see Adam. 4836, who's helping out around the house tonight. I totally understand, my dude. Do it to it. Tower 51 with the butt emoji. Brahavan is here. Welcome. Welcome to everyone on both Twitch and YouTube. I'm YouTubing and Twitching tonight. Since the stuff that I will be showing uh, does not ding the YouTube uh, copyright thing. So my channel will not get a strike for, for, for doing it. Night. Later on, we'll be watching Southern Discomfort. It is a, a 2000 documentary that was shot six years earlier in 1994, looking at the plights of a Southern indie promotion from the mid nineties. Uh, but before that, we're going to watch a TLC documentary from the year 2001, it's called Body Slam. It's one of the many, many TV shows from that era where someone got lazy in LA and was like, hey, who's the wrestling school guy around here? Oh, I see Rick Bassman's name. And they just sent cameras to UPW for like a week. Um, so yeah, let's go. Straight to that. Let's go. So always let me know if I am too loud, if the video is too soft. I want I want everybody to be able to hear everything. This is what happens. This is as 2001 as it gets. Let's see some of the stars of Ultimate Pro Wrestling. Not about being huge, not about being loud. Says Rick Bassman, the guy who brought more bodybuilders into wrestling than anyone for Capita. That's my goal. I don't want to be the rock. I want to be the next me. I wouldn't settle for anything less than superstar. Wait, the previous you was the rock? John Ryden, right? I can't work a nine to five job whatsoever. I have to be out there. I have to be wrestling. I have to be entertaining somebody. Wrestling's in my I have to be. It's like he's like the speed bus. If he doesn't entertain somebody, he dies. Continue to work at this until something breaks for me because I feel like something will. God, Chris Daniels in that hair, killing me. There's three things that takes to become a professional wrestler. Random test wearing eyeliner. Number three, you gotta be able to wrestle the part. Don't think wrestling is any different than getting ready for a football game on Sunday. Nothing different. Or getting ready for an NBA game. I'm surprised we haven't seen any John Cena. I know he was in a, he was in another TLC doc around this time. That song's terrible. Welcome to the world of independent wrestling. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your kindness, narrator. Making it to the big leagues of pro wrestling. This film follows the story this film at various stages of their game as they journey towards look at that look at that font in pro wrestling. font I love fonts big fan of fonts in the increasingly this is so 2001 it's killing me there's John Cena charisma and hard work Rick Bassman runs Hayden Wright broken through UPW so we'll be seeing a lot of him as Big John there's Bruce Pritchard we have guys and girls calling us every single uh, every size and shape and might be an accessory to a major federal crime who knows we'll see in the coming months and years wrestling's very very hard 
When someone walks through the door, you can usually tell pretty quickly if they have that spark, if they have the possibility of making it, if that's something special. There aren't enough syllables in the first half of her name. Not syllables, uh, 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 you know what I mean. Vowels. Why did I say syllables? Yeah, there's Malibu from American Gladiators. Hey, Kevin Marshall. Yeah, Rick Bassman is the coolest guy in 2001. His backwards cap, his, hoop, his little hoop earrings. Where just a year ago, it was really what they call eye candy, pretty much, with a cup full of bumps thrown in there. Now they want the girls to go out there and look. Oh, the women's revolution of 2001. Just like the guys. You've got to hit hard. You've got to make everything look hard. Oh, God. She's going to. Die. If you're not tough already, oh, you're with this for yeah, that was it. It was only said. You'll be tough said, by the time oh. you're done. I love how they they felt the need to put up beginner in that title there after watching her run the ropes like that. The background in entertainment, you know, wrestling is entertainment. Also, is her hair aware that this is 2001? Her next would be killing her right. Good one, honey. All right. God. I think she's a shoe in the way she looks, man. Money, 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 money. That's my baby. Come on. Oh, go, oh, oh, oh. It'd be great to see my wife shining. I love to laugh at my wife getting head trauma. She does. And if she's happy, then daddy's happy. If she's happy, oh, ew. I know that I fulfilled. Spoiler, she died in 2003. I don't mean to laugh. I fulfill a dream and feel really great about herself doing it. I think they're excited because they see the incredible potential. I think they see a gold mine in her, and uh, she can. Why are, the Why do they look like twins? They're dressed like child I twins. I pay him to say those things. My <laughs> personal manager. <laughs> yeah, no, Rick Bassman, very tiny man. Just hung around gyms. I could have played, you know, like. Hey, soggy hydrox. I'm glad you're here. Like you haven't missed much. We just started this first documentary. Yeah, Malibu was the dude that actually got hurt by a contestant on American Gladiators. And then the Netflix American Gladiators doc, they're like, oh, they, they, they take such horrible care of these gladiators. And then the very next scene, oh, Malibu's a huge pussy because he got a concussion and quit. Hey, Space Ghost. God, I wish I were before John Heidenreich. God, I'd love to someday go out in public wearing a tank top like that. Like, what's the point of wearing a shirt? Hey, Dale Santaford on YouTube. Yeah, he was in Married with Children. Uh, Malibu was. He was pretty much in everything where they needed a big, muscular fella for like a good decade. Yeah, he, yeah Jai Haddenreich played in the NFL. Yeah. Mikey Henderson, wrestling since he was 12. And uh, what sounds kind of funny, I told my dad, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. And at three years old, my dad was like, yeah, whatever, okay. Then, um, you know, older I got, and then I just kept doing the thing that I wanted to do when I was three. And then at 12, he's like, go ahead. Mikey Henderson, in my opinion, yeah, Mikey Henderson was pretty talented, if I remember correctly. I mean, the buyers are missing something by not picking him up right now. Like, he was somebody that got screwed over by ECW and WCW dying. He would have been uh, the next. He's pro wrestling's backstory. The next group with, like, the Reds and those dudes. I have a lot more Like, the low key. Some of the guys who got signed with WWF and they got signed because they're a certain height, a certain weight, and everything else. I mean, that's frustrating because I think, man, I put this much time into it. I'm better than that guy. You know, I can do twice as much as. Yeah, keep in mind, Mikey Anderson's just short. He is still gigantic. I would already be signed. Look at his shoulders. Sitting in bed at night crying. Wishing, you know, praying to God. This God, dude's I mean, a beast. A taller, please, um, you know. And, um, it'll work out. I just, I'll find Poor a guy. Way. I want to give him a hug. Chris Daniels advanced. 
This point, he's only been working for eight years, and people are like, this guy's old. Uh, the character that I use right now is called the Fallen Angel. I come out dressed in a cassock. I wear an ankh around my neck, and I wear a priest collar, like a clerical collar when I wrestle. And so people... That, really it's funny, that UPW put so, put so much into the aesthetic. The lights and the costuming. And then Chris Daniels comes out wearing like a boxing belt from 1974. In the last two years, I've wrestled in about 35 different states. I've wrestled in Mexico. I've wrestled in Japan. Chris. God, those shirts, the little the little zip up collar shirts. Unsigned wrestler in the Those were the days. The problem with Chris. Yeah, Daniels and Taco was Daniels had a couple really good. And you like shotgun matches a wrestler, right? couple years before this it's easy to think about the downside because every day that passes and you don't get hey, Chris morale on YouTube start to doubt. I love the sound effects they're adding here like the ring isn't loud enough consider me a good investment they may look at that and say well if we hire this person he may not have any more than three or four good years I'm not 21 years old He's Mike Modest was also another little shit brick house. I'm the scene where they buy nine. coke. One is a restaurant and bar, and the other is like a strip club. And I work those two places almost every night right now. I feel like he's overdressed I for, but I mean, it, you know, it costs like money to eat. downtown it's LA this myself. season. I mean, I, I spent that's probably where I spend the majority of my money on food. You know, I mean, oh, we're getting the, the John Heidenreich version of the John much. Cena shopping scene from the other doc. Right, that's all you're buying today? Yeah, man, I'm on a diet, you know, trying to cut back. I had to slow myself down. Moved out here. Uh, from oh, he has a cat. A big, big He's a human uh, being. I, you know, I left my family and my girlfriend behind. So, I mean, I've been lonely, needless to say. There, I don't think there's a person in this I doc who has a haircut um, that's like uh, less yeah, than yeah, five yeah, years out of I'm style. But um, I want to get engaged just to secure our relationship. Not that I hope John Ryan Heidenreich wrote poems in so the movie bar. That'd be great. That way, it's just almost like say here. Who was his I'm, little invisible friend, Johnny? I mean, I'm yours. Johnny. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Hey, you want to win? <laughs> Let's go. Ten, Love that story, go, Soggy Hydrax. I learn really well. I watch whoever I'm learning from, whether it's Dan like I've, or whatever. He's like a he's like a stage dad, like a pageant dad for an adult. You know, I know technically, like when I first started training with weights, my Darren tells me all the time my technique is just right on. Oh my gosh! Oh, I thought that was Malibu. Was that, was that, was that, wasn't that the word that was out? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's is that go. body by Jake? Rizal McBee, who's uh, brand new with us, is a question mark. A big See, these guys weren't on the road for 300 days a year. Like, the UPW guys mostly just worked UPW. Like, Chris Daniels took, like, dates outside of UPW. Uh, like, a couple other guys. But for the most part, UPW guys just worked, like, two UPW shows a month. Because the goal of UPW wasn't to, like, make money doing shows. It was to find bodybuilders at the gym, get them in front of Bruce Pritchard and get them signed. Because, uh, what's his face? Little fella got money every time WWE signed a UPW wrestler. You know, I'd work hard, I'd do this, I'd do that, and they would. But I know myself, and I'm a perfectionist, and I just wouldn't quit. Like, imagine giving birth. Why do you want the baby to be named? I think I'm my, my well, what's, friend, what's your name? Dr. Zan. Yeah, I saw that earlier in the chat. It's like, ugh. That, that's why you need to, like, come down from the anesthesia, from the, the from the epidural, or naming kids. Here's to be running a logging company with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Well, Mike's worked in the firewood business since he was about eight years old. And uh, he knows about everything there is to know. Mike about. Henderson Sr. is kind of an asshole for having his kid. He, he's working since he was eight. We've had Cutting logs. Like, how does he have all of his fingers still? Uh, let's him start wrestling when he's 12. 
I used to tell him, well, you can't. I'm not hearing a damn thing school. about school, by the way. And um, it always seemed to keep him in line enough. See, kids, this is why you get your education, so you don't do this. You gonna slam me? Yeah, you wanna be slammed? No. <laughs> my dream right I love now to throw is around my dad WWF at the lumber yard. WCW. Once I'm in there, I think I can stay there. Then from there, it's gonna be to try to be on top. I mean, I'm just gonna go one step at a time with my dream. First thing first, Poor guy. I'm get a contract. Poor There's fella. Probably a hundred wrestling schools in the United States right now. There's probably from those schools thirty to thirty-five guys and girls that have. A Why are they pretending like this is a real show? Fourteen of those have come from us in the past two years, so that tells me that we must be doing something right. Mikey Anderson, I don't think he even got a developmental deal. Like he did a bunch of tryout matches. Find new talent and to go out and develop new talent and help develop that talent, go out and find them in the independent circuit or find someone who wants to be a wrestler that has tremendous... Bruce potential. has given this speech a thousand times in front of a thousand cameras. WWF superstar. Yeah, Bruce Pritchard has been by to see our shows and been to our school probably on a dozen separate occasions. I love how they're treating Bruce Pritchard like he's Vince McMahon meets Gandhi. Never before. Of course, Bruce Pritchard. Everybody knows Bruce Pritchard. Right now in the WWF. We're setting, you know, new standards every single Tom day. Howard there? I'm, I'm sure has heard this speech a million times. Chris Daniels, when has the speech memorized. Could ever imagine. One guy has dropped off, boom, there's a hundred others over here ready to jump into that spot. So when time comes, you know, and, and it is there, get that call and it's ready, you got to be ready. What's the big kid's name? John Tidenreich. What's the big kid's name? John. Yes, sir. Hey, John, come here. You got you got muscles. Right. I'll talk to everybody when we get back. So I think you know, we may do something. And, man, I appreciate it, brother. I, <laughs> I love. Cool. No, no other business will you walk up to a guy that could change your life and go. Appreciate it, brother. I'm gonna go up to my boss tomorrow. Hey, can I have tomorrow off? Yeah, sure. Appreciate it, brother. It's a, rec it's a wrestling documentary. You gotta have the scene where they're putting up the ring. Galaxy Theater in Santa Ana, California, where UPW hopefuls showcase their talent. Hey, Adam Luce on YouTube. Yeah, Bruce. Awesome. There's a lot that's gone into writing this thing and creating it. There's a reason he's been around wrestling this long. You guys are on. You're performing. Yeah, look at this hat. Look at the hat, the earrings. Gosh. Oh, the XFL. He's trying to, he's trying to get signed. Representing. Yeah, the Rock, uh, Ricky Reyes was in there. You can't even really see the wrestlers that good. So you might as well stay home and watch it. Because something like this, you're right up here in the action. You feel like you're right there with it. Oh, the reason why Cena went to this school is because he was already out in L.A. At this point, he had moved from Boston years before this. He was trying to become a bodybuilder. Oh, that shirt, another 2001 relic. I feel like two, I feel like this era ages way worse than like stuff decades before it. There's a give and a flow between wrestlers. The two performers, the two wrestlers are working together to get a certain response from the crowd. You want me to roll out or in? I think out. Okay. And then when you get that response, then you know that... Like, I'm I'm pretty sure this is them actually putting together the match and not a dramatic reenactment, because Hoovy would be way more over the top. And then I fuck you here, then I fuck you there. Watch these guys and like, oh, they know what they're doing. They're not getting hurt. Yeah, all of the everybody in UPW is Buff Bagwell of various heights. Yeah, Hoovy's fresh off of going nuts in Australia and running through that hotel naked. When people say fake, it kind of insults. I'm not quite ready for SmackDown players. I love that midnight fella. There's no fake about. Being picked up by a guy two Samoa Joseph. And being thrown on your back. There's no fake about getting hit in the head. This had to have been in the midst of the UPW APW feud. It's not fake. I've seen like half the APW roster on here. I'm like, man, come to a class with me. You know, Why can't they just call him John? They have to call him Big John. In four months, I've heard everything. From the ankle to a knee to a wrist to my neck to my back. Oh, jeez. It's Jaws. And the guy will be waiting for you. 
Poor, J poor Tom Howard. That dude got dragged along for years. There we go. I don't know how that got so far over. I guess it's fake in the sense that in a basketball game in the NBA or pro football, there's two teams competing and we don't know who's going to win. In wrestling, everyone might know that Triple H or The Rock's going to win. But I mean, what's going on out there is real. Alright, let's go get the boy. Mikey Anderson's going to go somewhere. I don't know if they'll throw a fit about bringing the cameras in. Let's see here, got to sign them out. What time is it? Tay Tay. Hi, Tay. Hi, Tyler. What are you doing? Oh, it's my boy Tyler. Oh, what's the camera for you? They're making a documentary about how I'm never going to make it as a wrestler. We kind of, we separate, you know, sometimes we're together. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think WWE ever did a documentary about the cruiserweight division, Because so. I don't get to see him as much as I want. Would have been interesting. Let's go home, watch wrestling. Yes. We'll go home and fight. Do you want to go home and fight? I'm going to try to offer my son the best future that I can. I think that's through wrestling. Yeah, I'm going to open the gate with your head. Every time. He has to open his mouth and make me sad. If I can give my son a good home and food on the table, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. At least Mikey Anderson realized at one point this isn't going to happen. And got out. And I assume is living a good life now. Maybe him and I will be a tag team somewhere, so... Cool. And this poor guy, he's got a kid. And he's driving 90 minutes to freaking training. Actually, Mikey Henderson, what we're looking to do is making him into a bad guy. Basically, in wrestling, I mean. Oh, it's uh, Marty Elias. Had a run in WWE. And there's times, you know, where you just feel like, hey, you know, something's going to happen with this guy. And, you know, what if we made this guy a bad guy right now? But the thing that I would recommend for you is, you know, just to go out and beat the crap out of everybody. Don't smile. You know, just be intense about everything you do. I mean, what if I smile, but with a smart ass type of. Yeah. I think there's room for more. Pro you mean like big yeah, promotions? Yeah. I think the bubble had burst at that point. Be a smart ass if you have. Like people kind of were over wrestling for a bit. Like, I think there was way more talent than there was demand for wrestling. And, um, try to figure out the character. Try to see what we're gonna do with it. I, right now, I'm kinda stumped, you know? Oh, there's Frankie Kazarian with his beautiful, gorgeous hair. Well, there was. Chris is asked to comment on a backyard wrestling What? Oh, I thought it was just, like, a, like, just... Someone asked him, hey, could you come watch my kid wrestle? Backyard bashes. For the first time, hey, no mercy. Thank you for the sub. Prepare yourself. It's bloody, raw, and cruel. As always, for, for the Twitch folks, I never demand, never beg for subs, but they give me strength. It's just a matter of time before there's a serious injury in backyard wrestling, something like paralysis. Why are they filming this like it's a Chris Hansen bust? Like the quick zooms and the. The fact that they're doing it in an unsafe environment. Trying to outdo one another, so they keep pushing the envelope, and then it's. I'm gonna be honest. These kids are way better than Hyden Drink, and way better than Drizzin. That mom, and she has a wrestling name. Mom has a wrestling name. That's great. Damn good show. My kid fucking rules. My kid can do a 450. Fuck but we are the kids I have seen the buy stock about CZW. My favorite part is DJ Hyde just rambling on about bullshit in his bedroom. That room. They wonder why. Pound in the kid in the face. Says, oh, this is stuff is barbaric. Well, when they open up the box. Oh shit! Did you think something might happen with thumbtacks then? When he pulled out the barbed wire from underneath the ring, did you think someone might get hit with barbed wire? When he pulled out the board, did you think that that person was going to get hit with a board wrapped in barbed wire? What is he rambling about? Of course. He got hit with a guitar. He could have had his eye put out. Pointless. Yeah. Just Again, this is way better of a show than UPW. Cutting yourself just to cut. At the end of the day, they're all gonna go up to that one kid and say, "Hey, you know, you did a good job. That was good blood." And you know, you gotta ask. Why you <laughs> good like job. That. that was good blood. Why would you do something like that? Here, 
I know no other mothers that are professional wrestlers at this time, especially mothers that look like her. You know, it's great to be. My wife's hot and she's going to work, so I don't have to. Ugh. Whatever the case may be, because then you inspire other people. It's an incredible balancing act that's going to have to happen there. She's Why does she doesn't know what year it is like in one scene she's like dressed like straight under 1987 here it's like mom out of 1975 yeah this makes malibu kind of sound like he sucks like he's yeah he's stage momming his own wife this is creepy you know just to show mommy's okay it may look like i'm being hurt but mommy's pretending i'm just acting They're dragging your kid to watch you suck at wrestling training i would never want them to be afraid that i was really being hurt i don't know if she just missed me today because i've been busy today or if she doesn't want to see me go in there and get uh, slammed around <laughs> Okay, how do I get her upper body to land the same time her feet do? It's just, it's like flipping a pancake. It's very, very hard for kids. How, how do I put her down? <laughs> the last thing I want them to do is think that it's okay. How do I pick her up, put her down? What? Huh? And it's okay for me to do it. Yeah, her daughter's like, this is killing you, mom. It's so important that I gotta make sure that they know that that is not something that's okay and it's just pretend. Well, as I mentioned on the phone, we've got some, some big news for you. It's a great news. Uh, Rick Bassman's just meeting with guys at looks deli like shops. What we got in the mail here, or FedEx, I should say, for you is your WWF development deal. Oh, man, that's great. Tremendous. It's, it's, Tremendous. It's awesome. Tremendous. As the mic's just, like, on his head. In the morning and, uh, Dedicate all my time to training so I can get... I want to be the best. Malibu was a wrestler for a little bit, Adam. Like, not long, but he, yeah, in like the early 90s, he, he tried. There's like one of his matches on YouTube. He was not the worker of the family, and think about what that covers. Congratulations. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, they, yeah, Rick Bassman's like, hey, um, you're huge. Here's your deal. Here's your contract. The training in the ring. I thought he was signing his contract to train. <laughs> hey, Chris Daniels, I know you, like, are homeless, but here, look at me. I'm going to be a millionaire. That's when you get up there and talk for 30, 45 seconds or a minute, like they do on the... Um, <laughs> There's, like, 30, 45 the minutes. Are you sure you wanted that? The show is filled in in between the wrestling by these little segments. I don't break it. I break it. Every single time, John is going to point his finger Oh, Malibu's the promo coach. There needs to be purpose behind that. You know, the, 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 the thespian, Malibu from American Gladiators. Yeah, this aired in, like, I think early 2001. It was filmed in 2000. Yeah, Bam Dabba, you're that big. Just, yeah, just... Text Bruce Pritchard, like just DM him on Twitter. Hit up Gabe Sapolsky, be like, hey, I'm into crypto too. You'll be on NXT next week. Hell and back. They're even editing the, the promos on the documentary. Speaking to WWF signee and UPW wrestler John Heidenreich. The big swag is the uh, the brother of the dude who made that bigger, stronger, faster documentary. He was, I think, he was the actual promo coach at UPW. I don't know what this shit is with Malibu. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I love that, Kevin. Hey, Malibu. Um, I have to. We're kind of doing a rape thing with me and the announcer. Any tips? Any? Malibu's like, I don't know about rape. I, I know how to force your wife into like wrestling when she doesn't want to. In six months, unheard of. Everything's going great. I'm, I'm totally happy. He seems like he's a hostage on the. Um, Totally, totally happy. Eight years on the independent circuit, 
Chris finally gets his shot. I got a phone call today from one of the uh, talent guys at World Championship Wrestling, and uh, they offered me an opportunity to wrestle on Monday Night Nitro. And so it's going to is... they're going to fly me out. It was never Monday Night Nitro. Why do people say that? For hopefully a job. Uh, let's get ready it's either audition for a job. What else would you be auditioning for? It's like one of those things where you get that big break. Um, you know, a good match can make you and a bad match can break you. So, you know, I just want to get in there with a good attitude. I love how they made it look like Road Warrior Animal is the one standing at Gorilla. Match sucked, buddy. You got to go. In comparison, wrestling is every bit as hard. It's actually harder, in my opinion, because the variety of movements you have to learn are so much more diverse like football is a lot of natural movements you're running you're yeah i feel so bad for tom like there was one point i know tom howard there was a plan for him to be called up to wwf tv to be like being like gangrel's partner to like a vampire twin relationship with his girlfriend has suffered a setback about two or three weeks ago i had a conversation one day with my girlfriend and she she told me she wasn't sure if she was still in love with me you know, you just, Poor guy. You wonder what happened. You're trying to figure out what happened. What did I do? What did she do? That's what not nice. Where did this thing? This guy's porn. It's not. I love this girl, and they they put up a little graph, of the picture of them ripping. Try to see if I can uh, gain some information or some insight. Oh, I mean, all I do, I mean, I tell. Oh, Tom Howard's was Zoe Stark. I love you. I want to be with you. I'm I knew she was older than a lot of the girls, but jeez. And uh, you know that. I mean, that's all I can do. That's wild. Like, that's such a random couple, too, but it's wrestling for you. They're married. Wow. Oh, Malibu is a, a Christian bodybuilder weirdo. That's kind of key for me. I mean, I want to wrestle, and it's, it's fun, and it's exciting, but it can also be a platform for me. How do you think the documentarians approach the church? Hey, can we, like, just hang out in the balcony and zoom in on these people? Like, I don't mean to allude it. Did, did he kill her? As an entry-level position, Drizan is brought on as a... Drizan, okay, Drizan is her name. That's how the fuck you pronounce all those fucking words together, letters. There are certain things, you know, I have standards. I have my Christian beliefs. There are certain things I won't compromise. But Heart I attack. Am a I am a performer. From, from all those beliefs. Sexy costumes. Um, and I like that. I enjoy that. And I think that I would just kind of be myself and hold true to my beliefs. Uh, this is so and sad. I feel like I'm watching the first part of a, cru a true crime doc. Is what came across. Like at the end, it's going to be like, yeah, and then this is what happened. Bassman talking shit to Roland Alexander. Read those labels, bitch. I think there were a few WWE developmental guys that did like power team stuff for Jesus. Adam Lewis. Malibu was in the Mortal Kombat movies. And look at it all in one person or in two people, better yet, facing each other and battling it out. Have we seen Heidenreich actually work on a show? John has just returned from New Orleans, where like, they can't even, like, but she wouldn't meet with him. give him, like, a one-minute match to, like, make it look like he's ready? I don't need a woman to bring me down. I really don't want to get in this conversation right in the middle of class because you're f***ing up my concentration. To be really honest with you, okay? Please, respect what I'm doing. Sorry, okay? I, really I love him. It's it's like, okay. I'm taking this seriously. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. He's still upset about his girlfriend. It's understandable. <laughs> you know what happens when you, depress, when you suppress your emotions? Lord, I have seen Lord White. Here's my feelings. First off, somebody already milkshake dug up. Um, somebody dug up his personal Twitter. Ooh, stuff on there. Um, also, I give it a week before actual white supremacists leech onto him as, like, a figure. You know? So you haven't seen this? Back from his national like I just see, I just see everything about Lord White, about people boosting up this Lord White thing in the Ugandan Fed as 
as uh yeah bad news as you heard mike sanders a few minutes ago <laughs> yeah, I love how they're yeah. they're watching this. Like, fuck, I, I'm never used to that. Yeah, so Nitro had blue ropes for a bit at the end because of, why did they insert the crunchy moves? Thirty seconds into the match, I went for a move where I jumped on the top rope and I was going to do a backflip, but my feet slipped out. Did you jump on the top rope? Instead, I landed right on the top uh. of The first thought in my head was that I screwed everything up. My big shot, and I go out there and I almost kill myself. And on the other hand, I got the job that I was trying to get in the first place. So. And if, I mean, things ended up all right for Chris, but you do feel bad knowing what we know about Still WCW. Lucky. It could have been a lot worse. I couldn't like, realize. Whenever you wrestle, you know that if you're doing something high risk, you're doing something acrobatic like that. Also, I believe Crowbar got fired so that they could give them their, their jobs because the deal with WCW at this time was they weren't allowed to spend any more money, money than they were already spending because they were in the process of the sale. Big job. So if they wanted to hire somebody, they had to fire somebody to equal out the pay. So like Crowbar lost his job. <laughs> he was with v uh, Vampiro as the cult leader, Bam Dog. Yep, I made, a, I made a YouTube short about that a few months ago. Vince Russo wanted to call him God. My six months here has been my worst week. You know, you think you're in control of your life, but... You walk out that door and bam, you know, car wreck. You get in the ring, bam, you break your hand. Sometimes I question, you know, man, is it worth me going out there and breaking my neck? I thought he was gonna arm wrestle the dock. Like, you, know, you put my arm down, I can clear but you. I, I thought about turn, you know, turn the, uh, what's the name of the thing? You know, the doctors were on their head, I don't know, but turn it around backwards. You know, so, um, physically, it's your chief was very fun. handy. I see what you did there, Cajun. Yeah, right. I mean, look at me, you know? I mean, anybody that's a professional wrestler, I mean, is paying a dear price. Uh, why do you zoom in on it? You freaks. For whatever the reason, I mean, they're paying a price. I want to see the trout and sardines. Uh, sardinas. Like, what's trout and sardines? Yet another very 2001 outfit. Yeah, this is the period where Paul knows he's not going to be on TV, so he's just like, fuck it. No, no, I'm not dying my hair anymore. Tonight's match at the Galaxy Theater is crucial for our wrestlers. Not only is a WWF scout present, but it marks the beginning and the end of their independent careers. Despite his recent setbacks, John is willing to risk his hand to prove to the WWF that he's worth their investment. No, I mean, I've been working my ass off, getting beat up and everything. And I, want to I don't think they care, John. You're still six foot eight. You're fine. Brothers, an experienced tag team from Canada. I'm going to protect the hand as much as possible. I'm going to change one thing in the match, reduce the chance of me damaging this anymore. And I think everything's going to go well. I'm excited. <laughs> I could, couldn't sleep well last night. From the beginning of one yeah. independent career to the Pretty sure that's not actually good for your neck, Chris. Wrestle his last match for UPW before heading off to the big time. I should be all right. This feels a lot better than it did a week ago, that's for sure. Well, I'm happy to see him go to WCW. A bit jealous, but I'm happy to see him go. And you know, hey, I got 10 years... This, this is very accurate. This is how wrestlers actually... At least. Just talking to somebody before a show, and they're like, I gotta try a 450. Persona as a heel or a bad guy. His opponent will be his own boss, Rick Bassman. It's everybody's dream to beat up your boss, and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. I can't, I can't figure out if I think Rick Bassman's head would look bigger with hair or not. How many guys think I'm an asshole? Okay, let me turn up the audio. Though not yet ready to fully wrestle, Grazan will begin. Let's see if that works. In another match. She's actually going to get involved in a match tonight with uh, Victoria and Molly Holly, who are two WWF stars. So it's a they have an actual locker room. Why are these guys just hanging out outside? 
Along with wrestling his last match, Chris is also the choreographer of tonight's action. The choreographer. He goes over the moves of You know all those indies that have choreographers in the locker room? Roosevelt had a quote, thrill belongs to the man whose face is of he's by like sweat and blood. Even if he doesn't know victory, Teddy Roosevelt. he's not with those timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. If you go and try something and give everything into it, wherever you end up in the end, you can still say that you tried. It was fun, man. Why are we adding the sound effects? I had a good time. I think everybody in the crowd was happy, so that's cool. Hey, is famous for their dance numbers. The, hey, Dave from Zurich, is, uh Those are the Ballard brothers. They did like a slap shot Hanson well, brothers. Is, uh, you know, I need to rest my hand. Bones don't heal unless you rest them. The feedback from everybody seems great. But I mean, I'm a perfectionist. Y'all see it? Has to grab two waters because he's so big. I get better. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the lovely Drusan! Tonight, Drusan, what we're doing is we're planting the seed with Drusan, you know, to, you know, to pretty much turn her into a bad girl. Right now, you know, she's our timekeeper. We'll have I love how Marty Elias is describing all these GPW storylines like it's Scorsese. Be the face, be the good guy, get the big cheers when you go out, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think I'm going to get the big boos when I go out. As you can see here, hey, Troy on YouTube, welcome. With her promo. Yeah, this was on a, a morning channel like a million times she asked on in the early 2000s. Yourself, you know, to a timekeeper. I think the bell ringer knows exactly what I'm talking about. I won't really turn nasty and be mean. It's just sometimes. So it'll be okay. Just have to make sure I'm talking to my girls and letting them know that mommy's not really behaving this way. This is for the show. I certainly hope she's taped in. Look that guy. Some other beautiful moms out there who thought, well, I can never do that. I have kids. Well, sure you can. You know, if you've got a great husband like I have, who's very supportive. Also, I love how she's like sure you can. You know, I can't horrible. Be. Life doesn't stop after Like you really know. horrible. And they still have her in the ring working spots with like WWE them, contracted folks. I'm, I'm Drazan as well as mommy. Yeah, it was fun. Drazan is your real name, isn't it? In his new role as the heel, Mikey will betray Rick in favor of a rival promoter from Northern California, Roland Alexander. There's Roland. Oh, come on. You set him up and you get in the opposite corner. Okay, and Mike, 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 you've done your part for UPW. Now it's my turn. Oh, Rick Bassman shirtless. Of course, wrestling promoter has to get in the ring and be Billy Badass. Roland in like the in sync vest is awesome. And then when you feel time is right, I'm gonna search up that full match after we're done tonight. I have to see Rick Bassman versus Roland Alexander. Bam, you're down. Go to your stomach. Uh, promoters, which, which promoter? APW, the, the bigger guy is Roland Alexander from APW. Smaller guy's Rick Bass. UPW. For this match, a dramatic device has been created to justify his leaving UPW. The storyline is that the loser of the match will be banned from the Federation. I love these these documentaries where they have to explain wrestling stuff and like here. We've created a dramatic device. Where they've said that the loser must leave the town. In the corner, I'm gonna have Joe, and I'll, when I go to throw him, I'm gonna say, "Marty, get in the corner." I'm gonna throw. He's gonna go underneath. He's gonna go for a clothesline. I'm gonna duck it. You, he hits you. Because I'm gonna hit him with a kick. He's gonna. How does he come up with all this choreography? Mikey, that's your cue. As soon as I hit Angel's wings, come running out and take your time with. Look at me. Look at Marty. Bright idea. One, two, three, and run right back to the deal. I'm gonna get up. Sell a little bit. Then I turn around and Marty's still down. Marty, why are you still down? You okay? You okay? Raise my hand. What are you talking about? Raise your hand. I didn't count the pin. There's the argument. Joe, I'll give you the pin. Boom. One, two, three. Chris Daniels calling this match like it's WrestleMania 17. I'm still in the ring, and I'm gonna be sounding like I just got sent out of this place. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna happen this way. You don't have to describe how you're going to be acting after the match. Yeah, I don't think tears are gonna come, but I'll be like, 
you know, that type of thing. I don't think I can act very well, but, you know. There's a granny dressed like Mama from Mama's Day in the front row. That rules. I mean, there's no reason why I can't continue to wrestle for 10, 15 more years as long as I'm healthy and I want to or 20? perform at the level that I want to perform at. 25? When I started, there wasn't a thing where I said, well, if I don't make it in five years, I'm going to quit and, you know, go stack boxes in a warehouse or anything like that. I felt as long as I was doing it and having fun, there's no reason why I can't continue to do it. Joe's arms are looking, looking jacked. Yeah, Chris Daniel still works. I'll pop up on Ring of Honor tapings. I think he worked uh, Saturday. Well, not this past Saturday, but the last Saturday. You know, no matter what I do tomorrow, I've already got to fulfill parts of my journey. Now it's just taking it to the next level, getting the contract, you know, getting somewhere, getting noticed, then going to the top. Oh, oh, oh! That's came up way too short on that one. Getting in the water. Ten years from now, I'm gonna look back and go, huh? Well, there's nothing there. There's no big deal. You know, I'm on top now. Oh my god! A wrestler, a person become a wrestler is really a personification of a comic book hero come to life. And I, think wrestling I don't think Chris Daniels books for ROH. He's a talent relations for AEW. Real life superheroes and real life wrestling villains. The guys who have truly transcended the ring and become part of pop culture. They add one more dimension to the whole mix. They're real people. I've never had that before. And probably can't think of another medium we are ever will see. I hope there's a sad epilogue. Not. Billy Marchese was the camera operator. Yeah, no, there's no set up. Well, you just assume everybody made it. All right. Here's what we'll be watching. They know that the Ayatollah of Shrimp Riola is the reason why WCW is getting the ratings on the weekend. All right, that's what we will, we will be watching on Tuesday, 2000 WCW. Throughout the southern states of America, far from, far from the glamour and bright lights of network television, there exists the outlaw wrestler. And I miss the rest. This is their story. One summer night, one small town. This is Southern Discomfort. This was, I believe, shot in 1994 and not released until the year 2000. When it was on Showtime every fucking night at 2 a.m. after the porn stuff. Let's turn up the audio a bit. They could not make this town look more backwards. So I'm sure it didn't get any help. We are somewhere in Alabama. Mockton, maybe? Temperature 105 degrees. We, we needed to know what the weather was like. Clinton was president. Uh, I don't know who won the World Series in before, but... Who the fuck's this guy? Oh, he's the promoter. Uh, this is kind of called wild posting. Uh, of course he's smoking a cigar. Why wouldn't he be? Paper. Yes, Adam, this is the one with like Bob Arms. Tear it down, but I'd look for uh, abandoned barns. Got to stay away from telephone poles, though, because the power company always uh, objects to that. But... Uh, the guy does come along, I like, square him up with a couple of tickets. They could not have found is, at least for a, couple of days, somebody might a see better wrestling promoter. 
Like, this is the guy you call to play wrestling promoter on TV shows. I love how he's like, yeah, the power company doesn't like the post on uh, telephone poles, and then he just does it anyway. It's a hot day today, but it'll be a hot Yeah, there's, that's right, tonight. Kevin, there's nobody. He just posted on a random shed. That telephone pole looks like it's near nothing. There's Mike Jackson. A Bambi and, Pe and Peggy Lee Weber, wrestling's first couple. Referee in jeans. Always a good sight. Ad break on Twitch. Sorry to those of you watching on Twitch with the ad break. I guarantee you there's no AC in that gym. Maybe one like little little like window that, but nothing that actually helps. Sachs High School. One fan. That did say music by Chuck Serino. Yes, Jared Cheek. Hello. Everybody in the business knows that if you don't have a ring, Rick Montana. Ex-wrestler and promoter. Nine years ago, I had a big knee injury. Cost seventeen thousand dollars to have repaired. Me being a college boy, I figured out real quick that it wasn't worth the risk. People keep asking me if, if uh, you know, if I'm ever going to get back in the ring, and they keep saying, you know, really you should, and all this kind of stuff. And especially these in these small towns, because you know the bad guys come out here and they do all the stuff. And I was always a good guy. And, uh, and they say, man, you really need to come out, brother. Of the promoter standing behind the guy, like, like I'm not going to help you with that. And, uh, I, you know, there's sometimes they appear to just be to like putting the boards wherever the time, in the ring, which I'm sure will make the, the wrestlers very happy. This thing's like a sailing ship. You got steel cables on the bottom, and it crisscrosses, and then... Yeah, and it's a wrestling documentary, so we have to have the scene where they put the ring up. That dude is covered in sweat. He needs to stop smoking cigars in 105 degree heat. This thing's had 20 guys in it. See how sturdy that is? Chuck Serino. Strong career. And then he ended up doing uh, Southern Discomfort. If you look at it real close, you can see the steel is sagging just a little bit, you know, like, like right here. It kind of goes down and up and down. That's what having so many guys. That, then you got these big guys that weigh 325 pounds, like Jack Lord or some of them guys. They really I love like saying out. Jack Lord. Like, anybody knows who the hell Jack the Lord is. The you know, he's got you know the famous Jack Lord. A gym floor. At least he's protecting some, some the uh, integrity of a gym. The These guys don't have that, that benefit, so padding is way too expensive. Oh, About jeez. Five years ago, I was Random do rag ring crew guy. Love it. Well, guys, sure, I'll sell it. But I figured he was just some, some mark who came along and really didn't have any money or anything. Oh, drop so it. he said, Well, I want your truck and your trailer and your ring. How much is that going to cost me? So I quoted him a price that I thought would blow him out of the water. He reaches in his back pocket and pulls out a paper sack and starts counting Of course on the this guy has a paper sack. Well, how you gonna get home? This promoter's like <laughs> walking around with a bag I'll of money. Who cares? I keep trying to get out of the wrestling business. I've been doing this for 12 years. Every time I try and get out, somebody always sucks me back in. Yeah, why, why, if he's not involved in the promotion, why is he setting up the ring? Well, it's about 115 in here today. It's about 105 outside, but we've been carrying the steel in to build this ring. And it's damn hot. Well, I'm glad to see it up. So we got he is much so time. wet. Yeah. yeah about another two hours. All right. Well. And you know he's he, you know he's got money because he doesn't wear his watch. He pulls it out of his pocket. Bambi. Apparently, the NWA Women's Champion at this time. I didn't know they had a women's champion. This era. Where a bunch of the wrestlers trained. And one of them said, now oh, you love it so much, why don't you get into it? Yeah, so I went to a I'm, I'm waiting for people to clip and, uh, out you. He's so for, wet line. Thank oh, you, Oh, probably man. about six months before I had my first professional bout. And uh, I've been wrestling ever since. Some folks think it's the craziest thing in the world, but that's it's just a... Oh, this guy rules. 
I forgot about this guy. Uh, my career 20 years ago. This oh, he's also the print, uh, the Power Raider. My career has taken me to Canada. <laughs> he's wrestling Shiki, baby. Mexico. I'm very happy to be a bigger star. Be, be a big Olympic champion. WrestleMania age shirt. I was at that WrestleMania. Come to the Indianapolis. Show had a hat. I still I have a lot of feeling. When I'm not doing wrestling, I'm bouncing heads off down in Florida and around Georgia. We get in down in there and some of them over what, what, What's your job? That's not a job. Bouncing heads is not a job. Is Shane Henderson hurting that kid? <laughs> When I'm not wrestling, I'm a professional fighter. That's not Shanghai Pierce. Uh, it'll be 31 years this October. I'll be in the business. This is the era where you can just find a mask and say you're whoever. Gorgeous George, the original. But of all the pe all the masked wrestlers, you're Shanghai Pierce. And my father put me up on his shoulders, and I watched him throw gold pins. Yeah, Bob Armstrong was like was top baby face in Smoky Mountain. In the I was raised on a farm. And a good friend of him came to me and said, why don't you try professional wrestling because you're very strong. I used to pick 50 pounds of sweet feet over my shoulder, feed the cattle. And this is all what? I did. I don't want to hear the story. Someone saw years. this woman walking around with 50 travel. pounds of sweet peas. You need to be a wrestler. I just like it all. I can just wrap it all up. <laughs> we don't get those anymore. It's like, oh, I grew up watching wrestling. I love I love, you know, so-and-so. Thank you for the cheers, Dave. Appreciate it. Appreciate it a whole bunch. We don't get wrestling origin stories like, I was picking up all these sweet peas. Bob Jackson, I like to see the good ones. I don't want to see none of these jerks, you know, just off the Hell yeah. I mean, I like to see good ones. That's a good fan right there. This makes it a little better. just kind of gets everybody worked up into a lap. I don't know, you know, everybody gets kind of worked up. It's screaming, hollering, staring on my I love the juxtaposition of the footage. Like people just like, let's fucking show the end. Is that Bo James? Oh, yeah. These, these are the best fans. Like you have somebody to cheer for and somebody to cheer against. Kind of like life, you know. But it puts it in a little nutshell. <laughs> That's not like life. You can't just fight people. I love that kid. That kid is great. Is, is that Pat Powers or what? Pam Powers? What was her name? From the backyard wrestling we've had? Is she a veteran of the Southern Indies? Then moved up to California to just manage a backyard fed. So I just managed. Beating somebody up. That's what I like about wrestling. Nasty Steve Lane. I need to go. I need to find some nasty Steve Lane on YouTube. I don't know what them rednecks out there. What appeals to them, to be honest. I don't understand. Looks a bit like Paul. A little bit. They would just stay home since you're going to get on that subject and take a bath every now and then and clean up. Nasty Steve. Look at that shirt. He's, this guy rules. Drop top with the dangly parts. This guy is great. I can't even go out the ring half the time. They smell. They don't take a bath. They have no deodorant in their house. I don't care what he's <laughs> What is he doing? Anything can happen to professional wrestling. What? I'm not going to guarantee a win. I'm not going to guarantee a victory. But I will guarantee a lot of pain and punishment. And anything I have to do. I guarantee you this guy's like good. Dude. Around my waist. That's what I'm going to do. I don't care what it is. Well, they told Steve Lane he couldn't preach a sermon. But I just got one thing to tell you. And you take it in just like you do. You preachers on Sunday morning. You bunch of hypocrites. You sit down and you shut up. I like the chess game of wrestling. I like getting in there and seeing what kind of moves my opponent might have. Trying yes. to master them moves. Getting in there. Trying to judge what he might I'm sure, I'm sure he is on cage match. He's probably like 35 years Southern oh, Indy one. Wrestling is a chess game. That's what it's always been. And Nasty Steve Lane match, was on the NWA the anniversary show that had Daniel's AJ and Karino Hash on. I'm sure this guy's worked everywhere. He's one of those weird southern guys that just has ended up in every promotion. And we don't know. Nasty Steve and his old lady. I hope that's her name. That'd be such a good valet name. His old lady? He was just either a little man or a big fat slob. And now, up until about 10 years ago, 
the little man was still in wrestling. And the little man's still there, but he can't compete with a big, strong, fast man. And that's what I am. I'm big. I weigh 270. You know, back when Vince hired and I'm fast. this guy. If it does get bloody, it won't be me. Well, and all those other guys that look like Shanghai Pierce. Make Shanghai Pierce are there? Wait, what? The NWA World... What? <laughs> no! <laughs> they do the ring by his old lady. Now, fake Shanghai Pierce against Nasty Steve. Fake Shanghai is walking over the top rope, so he's like 6'3". Yeah, we have a fake NWA World Champion. Billy Corgan needs to book Nasty Steve to get his shot that he earned. Love this music. Mm. Someone just recorded themselves taking a poop and then they put a beat under it. <laughs> Scott Hall watched Nasty Steve like, my tights need to look like that. What's the story exactly, Soggy the Drugs? What's the story? Where's her, Where's the video pack? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That ring's falling apart. I love how they give us the big, long soliloquy about how the ring goes together and the physics of it, and then they start bumping it, and it's like flopping. Looks like very unsafe. Very loose canvas. Yeah, whoever's shooting this is going to make me throw up. All these zooms. Shit. They do sh <laughs> fake Shanghai Pierce needs to do a run in on the bloodline. Oh, jeez. He hit his head on the bottom rope somehow. Ooh. Ooh. Um, apparently, they, they gotta bring this back next month. Hot NWA World Title. Oh, jeez. Okay, I, that's what I said. This nasty Steve is secretly probably really good. That's what I mean. Great bump for that hip box. Yeah, Shanghai comes out. Take hey, Shanghai. Hey, Cody, this is the belt your dad held. Because I can go anywhere in this country. World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. It looks it looks like a the toy version of the But not like the real toy version, like the dollar store toy version of the big gold. Jax, that that's that's the Ross Trump that they come up with for like in a sitcom they the when they can't get the rights to like McDonald's. There is no way Shanghai and, and, Na and Nasty Steve did them. any and then when of I that choreography. This guy's great. And we have a lot of elderly folks, and they like fresh vegetables. That's what keeps them in good health and everything. So we try to provide them with a good lunch. You know, those fresh vegetables, they get at the buffet. We want to get another great camera shot where people are just walking right through that. I'm a homeboy, and I like cooking fresh vegetables. When I, th when I look at this guy, I think homeboy. Hey, Paul Topper, yes, the, they, they definitely like those fresh vegetables. Wasn't creepy until the end. Some folks think it's the craziest thing in the world, but that's it's just a fun for me. And he just looks off in the middle of nowhere. 
What makes a good villain? The audience makes a good villain. Because I can go anywhere in this country and do anything I want to, and I don't have to worry about people, you know, coming up to. Sometimes I wish they would know, but other times I just. I tell them that. All I don't think it's the mask that's the stopping them from doing that, buddy. They check into a nursing home because they're used up, dried up. <laughs> what? You got a dried up diabetes tooth and loof. What is that? I think he had a stroke at the end. Yeah, we, we need like nothing to do with wrestling. Just guys that have second lives as masked people. That needs to be... <laughs> what? What is happening? Oh shit, the bullet's coming. The bullet is born and ready for action. <laughs> it only takes a second. The lady and the gentleman we're talking about a man who is more than a man. He is a legend. All the darkness out there. Oh yes, the, 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 the chicken nugget kid. Chicken nuggets is my family. This has to be the town he's from. He just like psych that kid, like, no, you don't get a handshake, baby. This is professional wrestling. This is how it was meant to be. A 65 year old man wrestling the guy that owns the buffet down the street. You're both wearing weird pervert masks. And the whole town is there to watch. This is professional wrestling. Not even WCW Deep Cuts Live and we got an Armstrong. There's this this is what wrestling should be. Just an old man dancing around half nude in a high school gym. While a restaurant manager in a sweater is like, you stop doing that! Hey Optimum Vision. With these wrestlers. When I go to wrestle. I go there to be the champion. That's all that's on my mind. I'm gonna I'm, I, love this, I love to hear this guy politic. Listen, I make good money running jacks. I can't be leaving this restaurant unless I'm the champ. What I love is about this is like, I'm sure these women are like the nicest, sweetest old women. Like, six and a half days out of the week. And then they come to wrestle. You motherfucker! You fat piece of shit! Bob's 55. Doesn't look a day over 70. Great shape, though. They're, they're jumping the invisible rail over this. This is great. Yeah, the way it used to be in the way you like it. Did he just pull the blade out of his mouth? He's gonna cut him? <laughs> Fabulous. I, I assume that's the director of the documentary. Like, I assume that guy, like, shoots porn on the side. He shows up, he's like, hey, um, can I just, like, do something on the show? They're like, sure. Got a, got a funny name? Yes, Karate Thrust. I assume the referee is just a fan that showed up and fits in the shirt. Oh, he's got brass knucks. Oh, fireball! Did not expect that.
Yeah. Like, we don't need referees. Referee can be on fire for all I care. I love this. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna brain you with this chair. But I will see you tomorrow at Jack's. You guys open at 10, right? Do they have the guy doing the cop gimmick also running security? It's very funny. The, the director's na name is Fred, right? Because this guy's name is Freddy Valentine. Like, I'm almost positive that's the guy that's putting together this movie. Getting to play heel manager. That, that's not English. It's hard to see with fire in your eyes. I'm glad that the referee got a title and a name key. There's no way that's an action. That's yeah. That's not a cop. Yeah, that dude's yeah. That dude's. Oh. Okay, Fred Olinari was much older. Okay. I still think that's like a Hollywood guy that came with the. Film. This is a big deal in 1994. I love how Bob Armstrong is like, I'll freely take off the mask, but we're going to act like that match was real. I hope people don't think I look like Bench Snyder. He's known for that. He burnt me one time when Gordon Sully was announcing. He burnt me in Birmingham, Alabama. When I was sold out throughout, he burnt all the hairs off my body from here to my neck. And I've never forgotten that. So that's what he's known for. That's why they call him the flame. You never know when he's going to do it. He's always got somebody to hand it to him or got it hidden somewhere on him. You can see he's moving around out there a lot. He's always got something somewhere that's kind of a distraction. Trying to strike out his opponent. You, know, I'm real careful you ever do you think that guy did that trick at the restaurant to like impress old people like hey watch what i can do <laughs> fireball yeah i get a lot of i get a lot of chris park a lot of abyss when a guy got in there they went for it buddy they went for head they went for toe and these days they went for head they went for toe that should have been the name of this movie what it ought to be what it used to be people wrestled back in that's the difference it's very possible to wrestle more than one event per day or per night in the uh, Georgia, Alabama area here. Well, that is Fred. Okay, uh, that makes there sense. Are many, many, many small promoters in this yeah, area. Yeah, so they we have confirmation. Up. Freddie Valentine is the director of this. Night or Saturday night. Wrestling. I cannot get over that the dude that runs Jax is also doing multiple gimmicks on the show. Color, there's a lot more this was filmed in uh, Alabama, Optimum. This was made in 1994, didn't come out until the year 2000. You've had a pretty good payday. <laughs> I get paid a little bit well, the Red Ranger just worked ball, another match. So I, See, he's got to be in pain. Bring your car out in the parking lot just about day before yesterday and a... Why am I not shocked that the flame is a stolen gimmick? Cattle and everything on it down in uh, Georgia. So I enjoy it. I make a, I make a nice little living. I'm sure you make a nice living as a fake big boss man. Alabama. I got into professional wrestling because as a kid, my dad is a big wrestling fan. And he used to take me to the wrestling matches all the time. And we'd sit front row. And, and ever since I was about four years old, I attended the matches. It was just a big deal to me. I mean, it was like the most glamorous I thought life when she said, see, you know? my I dad, I thought we were going to get a trauma dump right there. Like to see women wrestle because for years, all they've Bob Armstrong just freely wrestling. getting and dressed sport. while and a woman paces around in an empty room with them. It's like a novelty. They'd see the midgets and they'd see the women. But I think nowadays, uh, people like to see the women and get, get in there and do just as much as the men and they've seen and this the is 1994 just as much as a man can do and uh it's a true we've had the you know, women's like revolution the happening for many the years derby. they see the women get out there and they love it you know because i think everybody knows that deep down when a woman gets mad she can always put on a better fight than a man can so uh, i think i think people like that but we have fake Big Bubba and fake Big Boss Man on the me, same show. Of course, the director of is also managing the women's me, match. I go out there, I'm 110% serious when I step in the square circle. I am very serious. Peggy Lee Leather has a very good skincare plan. 
I'll tell you when I first got into it, I didn't win a lot of matches because you Bob, learn a lot. Bob Armstrong rules. A, like, I'm sure he walked up to Big Big Boss it, Man's like, hey, Ray, how you doing? And I've had the belt for about two years now. That is a big thing to me. I mean, in every sport, you want to be the champion, you know? And, uh, hey, Ref Vinny, you, women in wrestling in 2000 was weird. That pay-per-view was something where the referee just randomly takes the Mick Foley bump off the cage. Yeah, Bambi was in WCW for him. Peggy Lou Leather was, too. She did an angle where she was like a possessed fan who was taken, whose brain was taken over by the uh, the black scorpion and jumped the rail and attacked Sting. It took a while for me to learn the strategy of wrestling a big wrestler like that because uh, when you first get in there, you might just get pounded to death. But I learned that she's really big. I love and that I was a lot the folks, than her. And so I had to the successful wrestlers that are like to try to get her off her feet, working the shit out of these documentarians. And uh, I'd say by the end of our wrestling series, I was pretty much for those of you who don't. Know, uh, Bambi and Peggy Lou Leather in real life were a couple. Traveled around the country doing this match. I am the best lady wrestler in the world. I can't say that. And then I've got a title match against this little Bambi. Well, she's I don't think Peggy Lee Leather has opened her mouth yeah, once while well, talking. When I meet you in the square circle, and um, Peggy Lee Leather, Leather passed away recently, so. But I think they I were together you. until she passed. And that belt sure would look good around my waist, and I sure hope you took the Yeah, these two, like, were in WCW together. They, 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 they headlined Women of Wrestling. They were in the AWA. Um, I think they did one of David McLean's other women's promotions. It was on TV. There's just a shirtless child wearing a mask, and it's not my son. Dude, this is great, because the kids are getting so excited, they're just, like, running at her. Like, not waiting. Not waiting their turn. I don't think there even is a front row. I think these people are just standing around. This is, yeah, this is so 1994. I'm sure this is still how one of these shows would look in Alabama. Yeah, that's definitely not Mark Canterbury. That's uh, that is fake Shanghai Pierce. Keep in mind, Shanghai Pierce was still on WCW TV when this show happened. Referee took a fireball and he's back for the women's match. Like, I, I, I enjoy how, at first, the movie looked like it was an inside look at this this indie promotion. And then once the show starts, it's like, now we're just going to film the matches. Like, we're just going to film the show and say it's a movie. Fans. No, that's not a hair I'm glad they, they, they asked the kids. That was fun. No. If, if you were a wrestling fan in 1994, you loved wrestling. Is that the finish? Oh, near fall. Also, I think there's a light set up that I think the, the production company put there. Like, there's no way this promotion also has a lighting rig.
94 might have might yeah 94 into like the first quarter of 95 was really in American wrestling kicks the referee I'm a big fan of them selling spots that where there aren't seats and just making people sit on the floor I'm surprised more indies don't do that yeah we'll let you in for like a little cheaper but we can't give you a chair and you have to sit on the floor. Can't stand. Yeah, this is Diesel's America. You see that? I love the kids in the front row holding up Polaroids they took with Bambi in intermission. Oh! Hey, Scuffle and Humbelly. Yeah, Steve Lane rules. I'm gonna look up some Steve Lane after we're done tonight. He seemed like a very fun little southern girl. Yeah, that's that's the PTA mom in the crowd. You're thawing it up. These two are doing practically nothing. This crowd's so into it. I love it. I love it. These two are the best. Oh! But hey, you know what? At least they're not adding sound effects like the TLC crew did. What is that guy? He's like. like Counting cards? They say that you hit your friends the hardest, but never work with your lover if that's the case. I believe that was a five count from by the edit. Kid in the front row biting his nails because he's so nervous that maybe might use the NWA women's title. That's definitely not the NWA women's title. I think that kid was wearing bowling shoes. The one, the little kid that had their feet hanging off. Oh. I love that the old ladies in the crowd actually brought little, like, hand fans. There we go. Bambi wins and sacks high school and, and Alabama goes wild. Yeah, I got a picture with Bambi. Didn't have Instagram back and then you just held up the pictures you took with wrestlers. The sack screw job. <laughs> that old creep. Is that fan just like pretending to be security? Kids just following her to the locker room. See, the camera following her makes me think she's gonna do like one of those New Japan press conferences. Oh man, Naito beat the shit out of me out there. Hold her girlfriend fat. I go out there to win. And if in the process you do hurt somebody, it's not intentional to put them out. I know there's a lot of wrestlers in the sport that try to intentionally hurt their opponent. It gets bloody. I have people approach it me. It gets bloody. Uh, uh, Frank, what about that? Is it blood cap suit? Let me tell you. Let me set the story straight for you. It's not blood cap suit, buddy. It's the real thing. And Bob Armstrong and Bambi are keeping kayfabe, and this guy's like, 
It's, nope, it's I cut myself. <laughs> Put a blade in the middle of his rush. Somebody's going to want to be the great Listen. friend, want to be the real smart aleck, and that's when you really start brawling. And it does happen. I'll tell you in four letters, L-U-C-K, luck. I've been very lucky. I've been hurt a lot. I've had most of my bones broken in my body at least once. But, you know, it's contact sports like football. You know, football players sometimes... They had to replay the one bump from the bullet hit. match. And so that's what they're going to have to tell me. I've had some broken ribs. Uh, broken nose twice, and I've had. This guy uh, did a lot of prep for this interview. Broken finger. I did some of those like rubber bands. I just took the time. I want to take the time to get it put back right because then I feel like I might go down here. And right now I'm feeling the better than I've ever felt in my life. This is the best shape of his all life. My teeth knocked out, and we got into a real Donnie Brook in Birmingham, Alabama, with a masked fella. And before it was over, we the masked fella well, <laughs> got into a Donnie Brook with a masked fella. I love I wrestling. All these teeth, so I had to get this plate put in. In Japan, I've got my ankle broke a couple of times. Over in, uh, I think it was Sweden, I got my collarbone broke. I think it was Sweden. Uh, my back's been messed up a couple of times. It's the, it's the toughest thing I've ever done. I, I can tell you that. Oh yes, sir. I got several scars on my head here and one on my nose where it's been just. I've had tire tools. It'd be funny if he's like, yeah, I blade my nose head. sometimes for fun. And it's really, it'll, it'll get you attention every now and then, but it's something I enjoy. Uh, he is so hairy. And like it's an exact down cut down around the collar, too. The time, and it happened twice. So, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So the, the chances of me, of me getting back in the ring are pretty slim. I work out six days. Oh, he's, he's wrestling in the match on the show. Well, I, I, I know it. Walking, he has to. Running. The flame is uh, the Power Ranger. It's a mental and a physical conditioning at all times. Uh, the reason I wear this mask is because in 1982, you know, the million dollar man, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Ted DiBiase, uh, he came into the gym and I was doing what you call pullovers. I was on the end of the bench mm -hmm. and I was pulling over 200 pounds. Well, he just thought it was his business. He just walked by the other end of the bench and gave it a kick. Now, I don't admit it, know if he meant to kill me or if he meant to hurt me or what. <laughs> I don't know if he was... The murder was in the tent. This nose came from another part of my body that I don't really want to talk about right now. Look at this. Wait, they made his nose out of his ass? They wired my jaws together. I had to wear a trachea out of me for three months. I couldn't breathe through my mouth. It was locked. But they never could get that nose to adhere back to the cranium. They made his nose out of his ass? Bullet Bob has ass nose? So I'm just, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm really, I really am. I, I came that close to death. Just by a simple fate, I'm here. Thank God. My favorite thing about wrestling is, is when they jump off the top rope. Mine too. A lot of mat wrestling. Now there's high flying. That's why you have so many more injuries. You see, you see people now getting injured all the time. Before, you they they the clip mat, the lapel mic like on his singlet. It's adorable. And you get him on the mat, then you become almost the same size. But if you're trying to fly and use your leverage when you weigh 200 pounds less, you're going to I wonder if he offered to like pull it up at the inside of a singlet. Uh, young wrestlers think it's showy. They think, so, think it'll get them a reputation. And most of the time, it just ends up getting them hurt. I said, no, forget it. Absolutely not. No way. Because I knew what I'd been through, and you don't want your children to suffer the same injuries, the pain, the bo broken bones that people don't hear about. All the suffering. Robert, I'm, I'm not doing any of that, that fucking high flying like bullshit. You're staying on the ground. He's been working this entire interview, except for this part, where he's like, I'm not doing high flying moves. And they were at the Cadillac waiting on me by the time I got there to drive it. So they got caught up in the enthusiasm, and there was no way to talk them out of it. So. By golly, I just trained them and tried to teach them the best I could, and so they'll have maybe as few injuries as possible. My career at this point, <laughs> probably, hopefully I can get another five or six years out of it. That's what I'm looking for. I've had several injuries in I this sport. I uh, hope you do too, buddy. The, most, the worst injury I'd say is I broke my arm uh, and my wrist, and uh, that happened about four years ago. I've had ribs broken. I've had a concussion. Yeah, bullet Bob rules. hit me in the ring and just completely knocked He's me out. He's a ton of fun to watch. I had a concussion. Uh, but, you know, over a period of eight years, that's not so bad, I don't think. I hate it growing up. At least you can hold that if it's cracked. Yeah. When you get them cracked in the back, it's twice as oh, Bob explaining to her how to sell her cafe injury. Bob's like a doctor, apparently. I got like one of those braces at home, you know, where you wrap around. Best thing you can do. They don't wrap them anymore in the hospital. Yeah. It still helps. I don't give a damn what they say. If you wrap them, it helps you breathe. 
I don't care what those doctors say. Uh, Weekend was all right. Saw the new Ghostbusters movie. Thought it was decent. Thanks for asking, Cancer Jungle T. Gray. Oh, man. Uh, do a lot for my fake NWA title. She has a suitcase because she's old school. She has one of those Halliburtons to put the uh, title belt in. They unintentionally made this look like the saddest shit. Or sell like a kayfabe injury in an empty locker room. First of all, I come from oldest country in the world. They call Persia. I was a shop Very Iran cool. bodyguard and Peles. I was a high school champion. And after high school champion, I've been Iranian army two years in Iranian army champion. Is he wearing and a denim Shah singlet? The country, and I come to the greatest country in the world, United States of I, America. I sure hope he's wearing a denim singlet. Nobody break my record. And a Captain America do rag. No, that's, that's not Captain a America. For a shoulder and a back hello, and BJ head. Penn. I assume you're not the real BJ Penn, that's but hello. I'm glad to hear from you from Germany. Nobody Thank you so much for the he kind words, BJ Penn. My real resting friend. And the reason I get copper box for charity, but Aaron Sheik doesn't need it. Oil man, Wait, what? Golf, the money is not the point. The point is, I just want to tell American. <laughs> it's not, it's not the point to give money to charity. And go pray and go mosque. And do practice and pray to God to you be like the world champion Aaron Sheikh. You want to come try it? Please come try it. Sheikh's just dragging I, the I, boom I, mic. I, no, that, that is the director, yes. Just feel it. Pick him up. They're breaking cases. Okay, you, you know he's the director because he's wearing one of those vests. On, what? That's all. That's it, buddy. That's it. Also, why is half of the crowd in there while they're setting up the show? Or is Shiki just walking around before the show with his clubs? So weird. If I make it from ten thousand mile to I come to the USA, all American greatest wrestling. Oh, I thought he was going to say that he came directly from Iran for the show. And I think I can teach the young generation go. Oh, Alabama Dwink was was probably one of the kids at the show. Oh shit! His old lady is going to be walking out with Iron Sheik. Or no, she was just helping him with his flag. And of course he has a, has a manager. It's not even the clubs. Yeah, he just found some pipes in the locker room. Yeah, these are the Persian clubs now. There is no gray. It's black and it's white. And people come to wrestling because they understand wrestling. They know good and they know evil. I love how he's joking around and laughing with the fans you know, before the guys, show. Tom is the evil guy. But over there, they see it a different way. Like when I go to Japan and wrestle, they hate my guts in Japan. When I come back to the States, they love me. It's according to where you wrestle, what you Bob doing, explaining uh, in Japan, foreign relations. Uh, it's totally different than in the United States when you wrestle over there. Uh, Random a good guy sidebar a about guy. Japanese you wrestling. Go out there and they applaud you when you win, when you do a spectacular move. It's more like the Olympics. There's no fan favorite or, or no uh, person that they they dislike. They go out there and they watch your match. Yeah, Shiki had just been on WWF they TV a couple years before this. Fans follow you around. They love you to death. And and if you don't, and if they don't necessarily like you, then they may boo you out of the building. But uh, it's real different over there in the other countries. Tokyo, the people over there, I guess, because they are. And it's Selena Majors, life. yes, Nathan. You know, over here they they. Wow, up, women's up champion. Thrown at me, Selena Major, Majors, Majors at this time was the fake NWA women's uh, champion. The people over here, they're just very vocal. USA! 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 A random sidebar about working working in Japan during this documentary about Alabama indie wrestling. They keep cutting to that one guy in the front row holding like a bingo card. Very cool, yeah. Plug for Kim Justice on YouTube. Yeah, some of the Kim Justice videos, very good. He does some really cool stuff. I'll have to check out that Funk vs. Funk video. It'd be funny if Tommy Rich's face is in the middle of that flag.
<laughs> a lot of these people in Body Alabama are in Seahawk. This is Alabama in a, in a test tube. Of course, the manager's wearing the fingerless, like, biker gloves. There we go, the Power Raider! When I wrestle as a Power Raider, I go out there and I, I try to show the kids... Power Raider kind of sounds like a Nazi thing. That I have. I enjoy being in the ring and Which is ironic, considering Austin St. James's current stance like on to the kids. politics in the world. Good and I treat them good, and the kids and I have a real good relationship. I think there's a lot of kids that need somebody to look up to these days. And so a lot of kids don't get much the just Power Raider. Them. When they come up and talk to me, I talk to them like I'm their father. Oh, awesome. You were at that, that West Coast Pro Show in Nightcrawler. That's anymore. awesome. Very jealous. I feel jealous. like a different person when I have a mask on. If I'm in there without it, I just feel the people a little different when I do have it and when I don't have it. I can let loose a little more when I have a mask on. Mr. Iron Sheep. <laughs> has to pull the mask the helmet down. <laughs> Iron Sheep was sitting here by Zordon. Not my Zord, on my uh, uh, Rita Repulsa. It might not be the same guy as the flame nut. That's the flame nut that we're saying. Yeah, he is. He is slimmer. Okay, I, yeah, I see that. Let's hit that USA, as the Power Rangers always said. Hitting someone Ivan Ooze has sent the Iron it Sheik. It does for me what it does for a lot of the wrestling fans, and that it releases a lot of tension. Yes, I enjoy it. Yeah, he must, it's 105 degrees, 120 in the building. That man is wearing a full mask and a bodysuit. And the color red that he's wearing, with the quality of the footage, looks like they're blurring out his ass. He is so short. Cheeky is towering over this dude. Bringing all the kids together and down. Look at that drop kick. Hell yeah. That's a good little drop kick. That's got some hops. Watch, this guy's like randomly the best wrestler on the show. Guy wearing a Ken Anderson shirt in 1994. I saw Pro Wrestling's fake. Some Pro Wrestling's real something's fake. Yeah, I just think this dude, I just think there are a lot of people in Alabama that look like the flame. I think I think I think we just worked ourselves into a shoot. Oh, jeez. Shiki taking chair shots. You know, you know what the Power Rangers used to do? They used to beat the shit out of Iranians with chairs. It's concussion time. Why didn't Shiki has a nail? Shiki has like a nail, I believe, in his tights. That kid is terrified. They're just, they're doing checks again. In the middle. Might be Nightmare Ted Allen. Be funny. Vicky, don't put that nail near your wiener. Oh, he just stabbed him. Iron Sheik just shanked the Power Ranger. Yeah, I think I think we all got confused that the flame was the guy who ran the last round. But now, now I'm pretty sure we're not. As the Iron Sheik stabbed this man repeatedly with a nail. You know, that, that's what Rita Repulsa should have done. She should, have, she should have sent an Olympian to go stab the Power Rangers with nails. This is chaos. 
All right, that, that is the Nightmare Ted Allen, who's like a real wrestler. Is the Power Ranger, or the Power Raider. I think he just gives up his hold. Okay, apparently he won the match. That all that poor man is heartbroken. His faith in Angel Grove is no more. Those things are taped I'm a together. Man. I got a job. I work hard for my family, but when it comes to wrestling, I'm totally different. I get my mind set on what I got to do. And I <laughs> when do it comes it. to wrestling, I'm what was I'm that? On a couple of moves I want to bring out tonight to show my agility and please so this big man can move around in the ring as he said he's quick he can move. he's strong and he's fast i've seen him hurt his opponent i love the italian guy with the southern accent gab the goo i just say they get in the way they get run over hey but i'll bust them they don't matter i had your busting heads period my opponent's going no i've been there and he's going to feel it sometime next week still Yes, Cheeky won the gimmick battle rule because they, because if they tossed him over the top, he would have like broken his neck. Yes, WrestleMania 17, that was fantastic. And like he took so long to get to the ring that the other guys were lapping him. There's a battle royal. That guy looks like a wrestler. Why is he here? Yeah, no, Shiki couldn't, physically couldn't go over the top rope. Yeah, it's not that he refused the job. It's that he would have gotten hurt that he lost that match. What is this battle royal? I don't think they announced it to the whole locker room. Here we got, like, just ran people randomly... Walking in, yeah, but I think Heenan said that by by the time he got to the ring, it'd be like WrestleMania 37. Yeah. I want to see that guy do more of his moves. Random, random Mike Jackson. <laughs> Alexander the Salamander. Oh, I love that. Love that. Oh, our, our buddy Nasty Steve's back. There's a mysterious masked man coming in the ring who is built the exact same as the ring crew guy. Poor Mike Jackson. He is by far the best guy here. Oh, geez. Okay, nobody got hurt. Nasty Steve in the flame. The 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 director's evil crew. Keep it down out there. Eat it. There you go. You get you get the director involved in the match, so you get more shots in the movie. I'm gonna choke his guts out. You know, like like you do. Are they doing commentary over the PA now for some reason? They weren't the rest of the show. Oh, he's taking a bump. Oh. Doesn't sell it at all. He's giggling the whole time. What is this? Oh, oh backyarder swinging neckbreaker. 
Oh, it's a pole battle royal. Yeah, there's no way the flame's getting up there. Nasty Steve wins. That's not how it works. He hit the ground. He wins. That may be the only pay envelope in the building. Oh, it's the ring crew guy. Just how much do you got to put up with around here is all I got to say. Huh? Do we still have to pay that guy? See what, you were supposed to oh, apparently he's the money mark behind this show, too. All right. And yeah, that's how you earn your pay as the ring crew, guys. You gotta win the battle royal at the end. The camera guy just walked into the lighting rig. Clown Head Music, yes. I guarantee you a group called Clown Head Music. And Freddie O and the Hellcats. I'm sure the director is in that band. They had baby face in the locker rooms. I wanted, why didn't that guy get more focus? That guy looks like he rules. Bola Duke. Bond had music. Yes. Back they come the Trish the Dish. Great wrestling, man. The Midnight Rocker spelled incorrectly. I, I hope Colonel David F. Freeman was the promoter, the old guy with the cigar. Alright, one more time. Here's what we'll be watching Tuesday nights. Back here on WWE. Cuts the that the Ayatollah of Shrimp Riola is the reason why WCW is getting the ratings on the weekend. All right, so that is it. That's all I have for you all tonight. I feel like we've been able to bond over a lot of experience together. Um, thank you all so much for living through Nasty Steve, Big Boss Hoss, Drizan, and her husband Malibu. R.I.P. to Drizan. Um, yeah. Thank you all so much in the chat for all the kind words. Um, again, a new WW Deep Cut short tomorrow and Wednesday. WW Deep Cuts live on Twitch only because YouTube is holding me back um, on Tuesday nights, or to this Tuesday night, uh, WW Saturday night, and a fun surprise. So thank you all so much. You are all great. And I will hopefully see you all on Tuesday. Good night. Go away now. Go home.